Hey, it's your friend Joyce CJ here, and I'm bringing you guys my battle for week 9 of the UBC. We are going up against Narth Vader, coach of the Scarborough Staraptors. Uh, no separate team builder this week. Uh, didn't have a lot of time to uh, to split these up, but uh, let's quickly go into his team. He has Clefable, Alakazam, Shaman, Zapdos, Tentacruel, Bronzong, Tredagon, Mega Sableye, uh, Cryogonal. Yeah, that's what it's called, Cryogonal. <laughs> um, Diggersby and Magmortar. So Narth took over for the Verd, and uh, Verd didn't have a very successful stint this season. Uh, he was, I guess, just not prioritizing UBC and uh, dropped out. And since Narth took over, he actually hasn't lost. So um, we're hoping that we can halt his winning streak because we need to get a win in order to hop into playoffs. Um, he definitely has some threats, things like Diggersby. I don't have great switch-ins to, and I'm not packing a ton of good priority this week. Um, like, I don't have Ice Shard and Weavile to revenge kill it. Uh, Clefable, I'm not too concerned about it, just because it can't really pack a moveset that my team can't deal with. Uh, just because, like, if he wants to bring Moonblast plus Flamethrower, he's walled by both Victini and uh, Quillfish. And then, like, if he's bringing Moonblast plus uh, Thunderbolt or something like that, he's walled by Steelix. So, uh, not a lot of great moves that Clefable can pack, but it's still annoying. And if he decides to go with, like, a Cosmic Power set, uh, I, that could be scary. If he's unaware, that's also scary. I don't have great answers for that this week. Um, and then otherwise he just has a lot of annoying bulky Pokemon. Uh, Sableye is obviously really annoying to deal with because it's <laughs> hard to status and um, it can set up Calm Minds and things like that. So quickly going through the team, we have a uh, Rocks Lando, uh, Fly, Earthquake, Smackdown, uh, Stealth Rock, uh, Fly is there to nuke Clefable and Sableye uh, if needed. It does like 70% to each of them if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then Smackdown allows me to hit Zapdos and uh, Bronzong on the switch in. So that's nice uh, max speed or nearly max speed for uh, max speed Magmortar. And uh, it also outspeeds Digger's B. If he's like a Scarf Digger's B, I'm in a little bit of trouble, but we'll figure that one out later. Um, Blastoise, Modest with a lot of speed. Rapid Spin, Hydro Pump, Dark Pulse, Ice Beam. Uh, I want to keep Brock's off the field in order to keep my Weavile and Victini healthy this week, especially my Victini because uh, Victini's got a cool move set, and I'll be relying a lot it, a lot on it for switching into things. Um, but yeah, Hydro Pump if he is like the standard uh, Sableye is two it KO'd uh, by this Blastoise, so I just need to hit two Hydro Pumps and then I'm in good shape. And then I have enough speed on here for Shaman plus Zapdos, plus, you know, and a little bit of extra um, Dark Pulse for Bronzong. Etc. Etc. Um, now we have a SD Weavile knockoff Icicle Crash Poison Jab. I think if we get up to plus two, we can pretty much win. We just need to sniff out any Scarfers that he has on his team, sniff out any Colbert Berries, things like that, um, because he could be packing like Colbert Berry Bronzong or uh, something like that. So need to be aware of that. But otherwise, this is a really great win condition versus his team. I also have Swords Dance Decidueye. Uh, Spear Shackle, Leaf Blade, Sucker Punch. He has one Ghost Resist on his team, being big, big Diggersby, so Leaf Blade hits that super effectively. Sucker Punch is also great because it uh, takes out Alakazam in one hit. Um, stuff like that. So, I'm uh, packing Yanti Berry because he might be uh, like a Ice Punch Diggersby, and I can set up on that. Or he might be Hidden Power Ice on his uh, Shaman. We can take one hit from Cryogonal pretty well with the Yanti Berry. Um, so that's that set. Next we have an Assault Vest Victini with Flare Blitz and Headbutt Flame Charge Power Up Punch. This is a really cute set versus his team. I don't need any coverage besides Flare Blitz and Zen Headbutt. And then uh, Power Up Punch allows me to 2-it um, to, to KO a fill, fully fizz death Clefable with Flare Blitz. Not that Clefable can do a ton to me anyway. I think I'll probably just spam Power Up Punch uh, until I get to a pretty comfortable position and then I can go for Flame Charge and then be in a good position to sweep. So that's very nice. We put enough Spadef on here so that way we can take up to two uh, Shadow Balls from Alakazam if it's Life Orb. And it also allows us to deal a lot better with a Shadow Ball from Cryogonal, Bolt, Cryogonal which I think is a move that it gets. I don't think I'm making that up. Let's just quickly check. No, it's not. Okay, so I don't know why I thought it would get that. But it gets like Ancient Power and some other weird coverage moves. Um, so... I just like this set versus his team. I have to be careful of, of uh, Drodagon, of course. Drodagon is his main response to this, most likely. And uh, last but not least, we have another fun set. A uh, Wish Reflect Calm Mind Sylveon. 
Uh, we put 36 uh, special attack EVs in here so that way we can uh, kill the uh, Bronzong in two hits. Like this two hit KO is a max Bidef, uh Bronzong. Otherwise he doesn't have very good uh, fairy answers on his team. Uh, Magmortar gets wrecked by this. Uh, everything on his team gets wrecked by this. It sets up on Dredagon most of the time. It sets up on um, sets up on Sableye, sets up on Cryogonal, like really like the majority of his team this thing sets up on. And then uh, we went with a uh, negative speed nature and uh, 23 speed IVs. This allows us to outspeed Dredagon by one point. But the reason I like to go with this is because if he's packing Gyro Ball, this will uh, make the Gyro Ball do as little damage as possible. So uh, very offensive team this week. Lots of setup, uh, four setup mons. This is like more than I ever bring. I'm just trying something new this week. I don't typically bring a lot of setup, so uh, I'm trying to mix it up. Um, I'm a little worried about going into this game with no status for things like Zapdos, uh, but we will do the best we can. And without further ado, let's hop on into the battle. All right, here we are with our battle with North Vader. As you can see, he's brought Zapdos, Clefable, Diggersby, Sableye, Bronzong, and Dredagon. Uh, I wanted to do a uh, live com for this uh just because of time constraints, but the battle ended up being kind of slow, so I just decided I would bite the bullet and uh, do a post -com just to speed things up, because I know how hard it is to watch every draft game when they're all 30 plus minutes long. So, uh, first thing that strikes me about his team is that it's not very offensive. Um, it's really just Diggersby that's kind of like the notable offensive threat, so I'm wondering if it's some sort of offensive Zapdos. And uh, from the rest of his team, like, it could be some sort of set of Clefable. I think I mentioned my team builder. I don't think that like a Calm Mind Clefable is particularly good just because it's got uh, it doesn't have enough space for all the coverage moves that it would really like to run. Uh, Sableye, I'm not 100% sure what it's going to be, but I do have my Sylveon as a good check to that. Dredagon, we'll have to see. Uh, like I'm expecting a, like a defensive set, particularly with Rocky Helmet, to check Victini because that's really the only response that he has. Um, and then Bronzong is looking like a really nice uh, check to things like Lando. Um, he could have a Culper Berry to take on Weavile a little bit, take off, take on a knockoff Lando. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lead off with my Victini because I want to invite in the Dredagon. Like he might be leading with Clef or Bronzong or something, uh, to try and set up rocks. Uh, that's sort of my thought process, but he ends up leading with, uh, with Sableye, so I should have seen that one coming. Like, I, I shouldn't have gotten cute. I should have just led off with Sylveon. Sylveon was good versus four of the six members of his team. Like, it was just not good versus Diggersby and not that great versus Bronzong. But even versus Bronzong, I could set up a Reflect, and uh, it can't threaten me all that much. So, as is, he makes a Prediction Turk line, goes for Toxic. Really nice on his end, uh, and I'm already on the back foot. So he's going to be switching on out of here into his Bronzong. Um, and so I take this as an opportunity to set up my Reflect because I think that that's about the best thing that I could do with my Sylveon here. Uh, Sylveon could have otherwise been a really nice win condition, but there's really nothing that I can do now that it's toxic. Uh, maybe I can wish up some of my Mons. That would be quite nice. Um, so I'm going to pivot into my Blastoise now. It was a choice between this and Decidueye for me. Like, the Situai could have come in here and clicked Sword Stance, and there's not a whole lot that the Bronzong can do to threaten it. Um, but I decided to go into my Blastoise instead and fire off a Hydro Pump, because he doesn't really have Hydro Pump switches on his team. And he goes into his Sableye, probably expected the Rapid Spin, and I'm able to get off a nice chunk of damage on that. So, it's not necessarily full Fizz Deft for it to do that much damage, but uh, I'm quite happy that we're able to 2 it KO. And uh, the Zapdos comes in and is going to dodge the Hydro. So, like, the damage, it is what it is. Like, it would have been nice to get off that damage. Uh, but, like, really, I just wanted to try and figure out what sort of set this was, what sort of item it had. You know, like, I'm already wondering if this is an offensive Zapdos. So, if I saw that he has maybe a max HP spread, if he's packing leftovers, that would have been really useful information. So, I don't get any of that here. And I don't really have switch-ins for Zapdos on my team. So... Uh, I'm going to pivot into my Sylveon, just because I don't really have anything else to, to handle this. And uh, come in and take the rocks, and he's going to go for the Volt Switch. Um, he's actually going to score a crit, which is uh, you know pretty sad, but you know it's, that's the game of Pokemon, it is what it is. Um, and then he's going to go into his Diggers B. Uh, I don't know exactly what the role on this was, but uh, Narth said after the game that the crit guaranteed that he'd be uh, able to kill me with his return. So, 
Uh, I don't think that that's true. I think he was going to kill no matter what. Because uh, my reflect did wear off. So, um, yeah, I don't, I'm not really sure on that. But I go into Lando to try and intimidate this thing and scare it out. I'm expecting a switch into either the Bronzong or the Clef. Um, but he actually, or sorry, the Bronzong or the Zapdos, so I go for the Smackdown, but he actually goes into Clef, which is kind of interesting. Um, and so I am going to switch into, uh, my Blastoise, or my Decidue, I'm not positive. Uh, no, I just go for Rocks. Sorry, I, you know, get confused sometimes. But yeah, I figured he wasn't going to be going into Sableye, so I get up my Rocks there, and Rocks are, are nice versus the Ranger of his team. Now I go into Decidue, and, uh, he makes the nice read and goes for Heat Wave. Good aggressive play on his part. Um, and I'm just going to collect Sucker Punch because I want to, again, figure out what sort of spread this thing is. And um, he actually goes for the HP Ice. And I do survive through my Yachi Berry, which is really, really good. Um, so the damage that I do does reveal that he's max HP, but he doesn't have any defense investment. So I'm suspecting... There's a chance that this is just a Spadef Zapdos, but I'm sort of expecting a max HP, max speed set. And we've already seen Volt Switch, Heat Wave, and HP Ice. Presumably his last last move is Roost. I don't think Spadef makes a ton of sense versus my team, so I think he's just probably max HP, uh, max uh, max speed. And then he hasn't shown a item. So I'm most likely expecting uh, I'm most likely expecting uh, Charty Berry in order to take on a setup Landorus. There's a chance that he's Yachi, but I'm beginning to think that it's Scarf Diggersby. Um, and then I haven't seen anything on the Bronzong. It could be a Colberberry Bronzong uh, to potentially take on Weavile. So I don't think that this is Charty. Plus, he's already shown that he's got a, a pretty defensive Clefable, which is a nice check for uh, Weavile. It could be even, uh, I don't think it was leftover, so it could be Kevia Berry Clefable. So Charty Berry is what seems most likely to me, but I, I haven't talked to North. I don't know. Uh, I at least I haven't talked to him about this set. I've talked to him about a few other sets. Um, so anyway, I went for Sucker Punch. I'm expecting him to roost now, because, you know, he'll be expecting my Sucker Punch. Um, so I'm actually going to SD here, just because I want to sort of force him to make a play. Uh, you know, force him to attack me. And I do go for the Sucker Punch here, because, you know, I can get off like 45% or so, which is nice. And he goes into his Clef, and uh, takes Rock's damage, so that obviously shows that he is unaware rather than Magic Guard. And so... Um, I'm just going to attack him here with Leaf Blade. I actually score a crit, and I do like 69%. Um, and he's going to go for Cosmic Power. So without the crit, I would have done about 45%, putting him at around uh, 30, like 30 or 31 HP. And then he would have gone for Cosmic Power, which meant it would have been a roll to kill from there. So the crit obviously guarantees that I'll kill him here, which really sucks uh, for Narth. Um, but I feel a little bit less bad just considering that it was probably a roll to kill um, otherwise. This this is looking spadef. There's no way a max fizz def clef takes that much from a leaf blade if it's unaware. Uh, no chance. Um, so yeah, really nice for me. I just go for spirit shackle. And... Um, we get to kill the Clefable. So the fact that I was unaware means that now my Weavile can potentially put in work because a unaware Clef would have potentially stopped a, a Weavile sweep if I do somehow set up a plus two. Uh, so that's very nice. Um, so now the Dragon comes in. Uh, I wanted just to click Spirit Shackle here because I would have done a nice chunk of damage, but I was a little worried about his potential Sucker Punch. So I just go for a Sucker Punch with my own. Do 41%. Died a Rough Skin. Um, I don't even know, I don't even find out if he's Rocky Helmet or not, but I got really expecting Rocky Helmet, uh, just because it makes a lot of sense versus my Victini. And now I do want to come in here and I do want to click Rapid Spin, and, uh, he's gonna show not to be, uh, Rocky Helmet. Um, he goes for Glare, which is really unfortunate for me because now obviously he outspeeds me. He goes for Dragon Claw and actually does a chunk. So that's some sort of invested uh, Dredagon to, for it to be able to do that much. Um, and he shows to be Yachi Berry. So this is sort of like an emergency check, I guess, on his part for, for Weavile. Um, and he's going to be able to, to take me out. So obviously having that damage from uh, Spirit Shackle instead of uh, Sucker Punch would have meant that I would kill this this uh, this Dredagon. So I'm a little sad about that, but... 
Uh, I don't think there's really anything I can do. I would I'd rather get some damage than no damage, and I don't know if I like you could have necessarily predicted Ice Bea, the uh, Yachi Berry for, for my Ice Beam. So anyway, I go into Victini, and Victini is looking actually pretty threatening here. Um, I am going to just click Flame Charge, because that is going to allow me to outspeed his entire team, guaranteed. Uh, I'm already pretty sure that it's a Scarf Diggersby, and so this plus one boost does allow me to outspeed that. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm not packing V-Create, I'm not packing max speed. Uh, so my Flare Blitz is not going to Oko this thing. So I'm going to go into my Lando on his Earthquake. Uh, I feel like he's really forced into that, otherwise he just loses if he tries to make a prediction. I actually survived the uh, the return, uh, which is nice. I guess I could have gone for like a Zen Headbutt Flinch or something like that, but that would have been dumb. Uh, that wouldn't have been very fun. Uh, but anyway, Lando's going to come here in here, and I know, I'm pretty sure that he's Scarfed. Um, we'll find out in just a moment here that he definitely is, because he does switch up before me. Um, and I'm actually going to double it back into my Victini. And so, uh, I go to Victini because I was expecting this switch. Whether he went Bronzong, or Sableye, or Zapdos, I would have been in pretty good shape. Um, like, Zapdos would have been my best option. Because then I could probably go for the combination of Power Up Punch and Flare Blitz and win the game. Or, uh, sorry, Power Up Punch and Flame Charge and then go for Flare Blitz for the win. Um, but he does go into his Bronzong, which is still a good check to, to Landorus. And I'm going to go for Flame Charge here, and he's actually going to be Aka Berry. And uh, so, depending upon the range of eight, he's, uh, like, he's at 78% here, as you can see. And depending upon exactly what his spread is, we might be able to kill with his Flare Blitz. We do go for it, and he survives on 3 HP. So we found out after the game that he had 140 defense investment uh, with no boosting nature. Which meant it was like 68% to 83% to kill. So like it might have even been slightly in his favor to, to live there. So, uh, you know, I, I tried to get cute and not run max attack on this thing, but it's uh, biting me in the butt here. And uh, I didn't want to run V-Create because I wanted uh, to be, be able to go for the most amount of speed, um, which is which stinks. And you know, there, I don't think there's really any way I could have played around this. If I went for Power Up Punch first, um, and then uh, and then I went for Flame Charge or Flare Blitz, he still would have killed me. So uh, he's going to be able to Revenge with Earthquake. No problem, obviously. Um, what I'm thinking here is I go into my Weavile. And uh, I'll be able to kill this Bronzong, and then basically, like, he's at the point where, where Scarf Diggers Beat can win. My thought is maybe he goes for Ice Punch on my predicted Lando switch in. And, like, that would be a little bit of a choke on his part, because Return does 2 at KO. So he really has no reason to make any other play. Um, but that's why I went into Weavile instead of Landorus. Um, but Narth is a smart guy, he's not going to make that play, he's just going to go straight for the Return. And uh, I don't know if he's going to switch out or not, um, but he just stays in and clicks return. I was actually a little surprised that it did that much. I think he's an Adamant Scarf instead of a Jolly Scarf um, for it to do that much. But I went for SmackDown in case it went into Zapdos. Like, I could have killed uh, Zapdos with a SmackDown plus EQ, and I would have survived the HP Ice, and then I could have 2 KO'd uh, the Sableye. So we are going to lose 3-0, which is... Uh, definitely not a result that I like, but uh, I, I think actually the team that I brought was was pretty nice. I just don't think I executed particularly well in the game. And uh, Narth obviously uh, executed very well. So uh, hats off to him. He's taken over a team that was 0-6, and, and he's won three in a row now. So that's uh, that's that's pretty nice. He should feel pretty good about that. And uh, that does put us on 4-5 or five if for the season, which means that we are just on the outside of the uh, playoff picture. Uh, the best way for us to assure that we're going to make playoffs is to go 3-0 and for the rest of the season. I think there's an outside chance that we make it if we go 2-1 and because we do play against uh, three people in our final three weeks that are also in contention for, for playoffs. So we play against Turkey, we play against Carney Hobo, and we play against uh, the... Uh, Deccan Wild Chargers, coached by Papa Boy, aka Daniel. So, if we can win all those games, I think we'll be set. If we can win two of those games, I think we'll also be set. But if we go one and two, that'll put us at a record of five and seven, and that's not going to cut it. 
Um, so seven and five is the goal. Six and six, we might accept, which would mean we get the same record as last season, which is a little sad. But as long as we make playoffs, uh, that would be good. But you know, it's not guaranteed right now. Uh, really gonna have to step it up and play a little bit better. So. Do want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check back to the channel for other gaming and Pokemon content. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.